We're going to look at recovering a lost password in Linux. And specifically today, uh, Ubuntu 10.10 or Maverick Meerkat. <clears throat> they say, you know, the song says there's 50 ways to leave your lover, and there's more than one way to recover a password. But let's say that you're getting old and senile like me, and you forgot your password. Um, and, you know, you need to recover it that way. Or, more likely than not, one of your friends, your pals, your buddies gave you their computer to repair, and they forgot to give you their login password. But they still expect you to repair it for them. It would be nice to be able to log in and temporarily modify the password to something that would let you log in and repair a system. And they could always change it back later. So for whatever reasons, this is what we want to do. Method 1. Enter recovery options from the Grub2 boot menu. To utilize this method, 1. Press E at the Grub2 boot menu. 2. Change the line RO quiet splash to RW init equals forward slash bin forward slash bash. 3. Press Ctrl D to boot into Linux. So notice the E option here on my boot menu, E to edit the commands. The first method we'll look at is that option. I'm going to hit E for edit. And these are just some of the commands passed into the Grub bootloader when I'm booting. But specifically what I'm interested in, let me move the cursor back here, is this line where it says RO quiet splash, which is in my config file in the etc um, grub.d folder on my system. Well, I'm going to erase that. And instead of read only, I'm going to make it read write, rw, init equals, and I'm just going to say ben bash. All right, so for the born shell. And now when I've done this, there's several things I could do. I could hit B to boot. I'm going to do control X to boot up my system under these settings, okay? <clears throat> and when I do, it won't boot up by default and query me or ask me for my login password, but instead, it'll take me to a temporary root shell. And again, who am I? I'm logged in as root. So although normally I'd use sudo, since I'm logged in as root now, I don't need to use the sudo command. Um, at this point, I could just use the password command and change the name if I knew who I was. But let's say that I didn't. You know, again, I have Alzheimer's and I can't remember who I am. Well, there's still hope for me. If I list the contents of the directory, I could go into the home folder and any accounts that people use to log into and get an X Windows or Genome desktop would have a home folder most probably located here. So now I, I can remember that. I'm Charles Germany and I log in as C Germany. And so I could just use the password command on on that user account. Um or you know, again, the more likely scenario is that maybe you're working on someone else's computer and you don't know who they log in as, nor do you know their password. Well this way you can learn the user account they used to log in as, and then you can reset the password to something you know. Um alternatively there's you know there's always ten or twelve ways to do anything, I suppose. But you could cat um, remember that in the Etsy password file, there's also a list of users. And there I am, and that way I could get a valid user account. So I'm just going to go and clear the screen, and I'm going to use the password command. And I'm going to change the password for the account C Germany. And I'm just going to make it all password. How easy is that? So it's all lowercase password. And now that I've done that, it's been updated. I would just want to sync it if I need to write any unsaved changes and then I can simply reboot my system now and I'll be able to log in with my new password. Method 2. Select the recovery console option from the Grub2 boot menu if it is available. Method number 2. Use the recovery console. Um, by default, a lot of Ubuntu installations will have a recovery mode. They don't all have it, so you might have to use the previous method or the next method. But if you do have access to recovery mode, you can use this method. So if I simply select that menu option, I can boot into recovery mode. Now more secure you know, uh, Linux systems in Ubuntu, they may encrypt passwords or password protect rub, or they may you know, simply remove the, you know, in this case, this option from the menu and their grub configuration false. But here I can drop to a root shell and I can do the same thing now. Who am I? And if I needed to, I could go into the home folder and list the contents thereof and I could reset the password. So, and this time we'll make it all lowercase pass. 
You'll never brute force that password. Mwah! Um, I'm just going to change it back because I'll never remember all these password changes. To all lowercase. Ha 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 ha. My password is 1, 2, 3, 4. What a coincidence. That's the same combination on my luggage, if you're a Spaceballs fan. Um, and again, I could sync that information and I could reboot. Method 3. Boot up off of a Linux Ubuntu flash drive, such as Pendrive Linux or the Ubuntu Live CD. And a third option would be um, we could use our you know, Ubuntu multi-boot flash drive from Pendrive Linux, or we could use our Ubuntu Live CD, or for that matter, if you had another flavor like Fedora. Any Live CD would do, as long as it would let you boot and mount uh, an EXT3 or 4 or 2 or you know, Linux file system. So I'm, again, I'm going to go try Ubuntu without installing to boot into the Live CD mode I'm off of my flash drive. And here I am on the live and you know live CD screen, and I could choose to install Ubuntu, but I don't really need that option. But what I do want to do is mount uh, the partition that my Linux system's on. And again, let me kind of blow this up a little bit. Oops, I went the wrong way. So hopefully it will be easier to see. And just for ease of reference, I'm going to recurse into the root folder, and you know, this is the default boot off of the live CD, so nothing's mounted yet. When trying this third method, once you've booted up off your Linux flash drive or live CD, first ascertain which partition Linux is installed to on your hard drive. To do this, use sudo fdisk-l. But what I want to do is look at my file system. So I'm going to use the fdisk-l command. And again, I noticed that you know here's my Linux installation here. It's on the fifth partition of the first hard drive. In this case, on you know my Toshiba satellite laptop here. Um, and the partitioning structure. Remember that this was Leopard, and this was Windows 7. Second, mount the partition on the hard drive, not the flash drive or the live CD that contains the Linux system files. Use sudo mount the partition being mounted to the local mount point. And this is my actual Ubuntu installation down here. But the particular partition that I'm interested in mounting is this one here. This is the actual operating system here, the file system. Okay. So I could mount that anywhere. Um, let's look at what's mounted currently in the mount folder. All right, nothing's really mounted there right now. So I'm just going to use the mount folder in my live image to mount it to. So sudo, and I'm going to use the command mount. And I'm going to do dev sda5 and I'll mount it to the mount folder okay and now if I go into the mount folder from root when I lift the contents thereof I'm actually seeing the contents of my hard drive not the contents in the live image third edit the Etsy password file in your newly mounted file system use sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash password and particularly what I'm interested in is the password file on my Etsy folder so I'm going to go CD, ETC, etc., etc. And if I look at the password file, um, this is what I'm interested in here. In this case, this user account. But if I remove any hashed value, or in this case, the X between these two colons, then what I can do is pretty much reset that account so that I can log in without having to enter a password. And then I can simply use the password command later when I log in to reset the password to anything I like. And this won't work on some of the other methods we've looked at, you know, would require Grub2 and Ubuntu for them to work. But in this particular method, you could use this with Grub Legacy. You could use it on Fedora. You could use it on many different flavors of Linux besides just Ubuntu. And in order to do this, I could use Nano. Um, you know, I could use GK sudo gedit if I did Alt F2. There's lots of things that I could do. But particularly, I'm just going to do uh, sudo nano. 
and I'll edit the password file. Okay. Not a, I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna remove the little X here between these two colons. All right. So now there's nothing here. And now I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna do Control X to exit. I'm gonna say Y yes and call it password. Fourth, clearly dismount the hard drive's file system from your local folder. Use sudo umount forward slash the local mount point. All right, and then I'm going to, I need to get out of the folder so that I can unmount it. Can't unmount a folder when you're inside of it. So I'm gonna go back to root and now I'm just gonna unmount sudo umount mnt. And now, just want to make sure you know that that drive, that partition is no longer mounted there, so it's cleanly unmounted. Fifth, reboot and log into your newly unlocked Linux installation. Use sudo reboot or sudo shutdown dash r now. Now I can reboot. Um, and again, to do that, I could just simply issue the command from the shell that I'm in sudo reboot. And then, okay, and now I'm no longer booting off the live CD, so now I'm booting off my hard drive. And I'm going to log in as that user account um, whose password, or whose account I reset. So I'm going to boot up here, and particular user was C Germany. And I just click on C Germany, and bada bing, bada boom, it logs right in. Don't even have to enter a password at all. So now that I'm logged in, I see Germany with no password. Let me expand this a little bit so you can see. And again, if I were to look at the file, um, I'll go to the etc folder, and I'll simply cat password file. So notice that unlike other accounts, between these two colons, I have no password. So I, at this point, I could not use sudo. I can't authenticate without a password. But since I'm logged in as myself without a password, I could use the password command and reset my password. So I'm going to do password and see Germany. Notice it doesn't prompt me for my old password because I don't have one. But I can reset it. So password and password okay updated successfully and now notice I'll be able to do things like sudo so let's say we're gonna open nano with sudo I could say sudo nano and now I have permission to do that um, now if I were to look at the file um, notice that it's a bit different like like these guys have an X between the colons and then these are the group IDs, and then you know their home folders and other information there. Notice how my user account has changed. Between the first two colons, I have this hashed value, which represents my password. Before there was an X there, and then there's simply a group and a group, and then there's my user account and my home directory and so forth. Six. Reshadow your new password for safekeeping. Use sudo shadow config off and on. Again, if I cat the file, notice that here my hashed value for my new password has been stored in the password file. But notice these guys just have an X there. And the reason for that is um, I'll need root privileges. Don't normally need sudo a cat, but I can't read the password, the shadow file, uh, without using root privileges. And, you know, these values here. Um, Shadowing or password shadowing is now the default in Ubuntu. Um, so what, I'm, what I want to do is um, I'm going to disable sudo shadow config off. Okay. And then shadow passwords are now off. Um, I'm going to cat the password file <clears throat> and notice now that you know these values are here and were I to 
and now there's there's no shadow password file okay but you know shadow shadow passwords is enabled by default and it works by it obfuscates your passwords a little bit so you couldn't simply get hashed values or passwords by looking at the password file doesn't mean that a hacker couldn't obtain them but maybe it's just a little bit more work um, so sudo and I'm going to turn it back on and now shadow passwords are now turned on and sudo cat okay and again notice that I have these passwords stored here and here in my password file now that hashed value is an X so again it's obfuscated or it's hidden